Hi, and welcome to this yoga session brought to you by Cycling UK, the Women's Festival of Cycling. Uh, so my name's Alice McNeil, and I'm a physiotherapist and a yoga teacher up here in the Peak District. Um, and as part of the Women's Festival of Cycling, I'll be doing two yoga classes. Um, so this one, which is a hour-long kind of mellow, deep stretch kind of class. The other is, is more kind of invigorating class. Um, they're both designed for cyclists to help us really work into the bodies, counteract some of the effects of, of cycling um, and actually um, use the yoga practice on the mat to transfer to things on the bike. Um, so the aim of the session today um, is really just to stretch. If you're new to cycling or, or you've just been cycling more than, than usual, we, probably a bit achy, um, want to give your body a little bit of TLC. So the idea today is just to really work into those tight, tired areas. Um, we're going to use the breath as well, some guided relaxation. Um, so we have this full on holistic approach to allowing the physical body to, to relax. Um, so I guess, ah, important first, um, we shouldn't feel pain. This is, isn't a practice of no pain, no gain at all. So if you don't feel great or something doesn't feel right, don't feel like you have to push through and do it. It's really about listening to your body and doing what feels right for you today. There might be postures you've done before and felt absolutely fine. Um, and then today, oh, that doesn't quite feel right. That's, that's fine, just listen to your body, find a comfortable position and then do, rejoin the class when, when you feel ready. Um, yeah, so let's get started. All right, so come into a comfortable seat. Okay, um, you might be cross-legged, you might be kneeling, you might even fancy just having a lie down um, for now. Uh, it's really a chance for you to just let the body unwind. So whatever feels right. Okay, maybe you want to loosen up the jaw a little bit, open the mouth and close. It's a great thing about virtual classes is that you can make really stupid noises and nobody's really going to care or listen. <laughs> so, okay, maybe shake out the shoulders, looking one way and then the other, look at the neck. Or just noticing how things feel. All right, okay. Perhaps resting the hands on the thighs. If we if we practice mudras, maybe bringing the first finger to the thumb, gently touching, stretching the rest of the fingers away with the palms up or palms down. And with eyes open or closed, let's bring attention to the breath. So just breathing for now. Just noticing the breath, noticing, going breathing through the nose, through the mouth. Can we feel the air fill up the top of the chest, the bottom of the chest, the front, the back, the sides? What's going on? I'm not trying to change anything, just gently watching. And then if we can, moving to allowing the breath to come in and out through the nose, if that's accessible. Perhaps resting the tongue gently on the roof of the mouth, allow the lips to be soft, the jaw to be soft. Maybe the chin gently tucked in so the back of the neck's long. And as we breathe, seeing if we can allow the belly to fill with air. As we breathe out, allowing it to gently flow back out of the nostrils. Just being aware of the whole of the out breath, the whole of the in breath. Perhaps becoming aware of the spaces between the in breath and the out breath. Let's bring one hand to the chest, one hand to the belly. And just seeing how the hands move as we breathe, seeing if we can 
feeling in the belly, allowing that bottom hand to move. Eyes have been open, closed. If we can open the eyes, okay. And I'd like to do a pranayama breathing exercise known as the alternate nostrils breath. So it's it's renowned for its kind of calming effects. Um, if you've got a bit of a stuffy nose and the air doesn't want to flow quite as well as you'd like, then you can just stick to the the gentle belly breathing. Um, perhaps imagining the air entering one nostril and then the other. Um, it's, it's up to you. Okay, so if you're joining me, let's take our right hand. I'll, I'll do my right as well. And we're going to be using the thumb to block off one nostril. We're going to use the um, middle and the index finger to just rest kind of between the eyebrows and up a little bit. And then the ring finger and little finger will be blocking off the other nostril. Okay, so we start off by blocking off the nose side. Then as we breathe in, the air enters the other nostril. And we can really feel that air coming in. We get to the top of the inhale. And then we swap the block. So we lift up the thumb, block the other side. And the air comes out of the, the thumb side now. And we keep the block the same. And breathe in through that thumb side. Change the block, out through the other side. In through the same side. Out through the other side. If you become, if you're dizzy or anxious in this position, please just release your hand down, go back to the natural breath. So you can continue moving in through the front side, out through the opposite side. Continue with your own breath. One more round. Let's finish as we breathe out through the thumb side. Releasing the hands. Let's take in a big breath. As we do, let's spread our arms wide. And breathe out with a sigh. Let's do two more. So breathing in as we stretch the arms wide. Breathing out as we hug ourselves. One last time, let's let out a big sigh through the mouth. <sighs> oh, right, let's just bring our fingertips in front. If, if you've been laid down, come and have a gentle sit back up now. And let's walk the fingers forwards, stretching through the arms. In fact, if it's comfortable, taking a cross-legged position. Um, or a loose cross-legged position, just it will start to stretch out a, a little bit through the hips. Moving forwards. I'm just noticing if there's any sensation, any stretch sensation at all. Notice where it is, the quality of how it feels. Back up, let's switch the fold of the leg so you've got the other um, leg in front again. This might feel a little, a little bit different. Okay, so throughout the class today, we don't want to force anything. We're really letting gravity do the work and the breath do the work. Um, so we don't need to expand too much energy doing things, but just, just listening to our bodies. Okay, so let's bring those legs out so we give them a shake. Bending up the knees and let's 
allow the knees to go one side then the other, like windscreen wipers. You can exaggerate that if we like. Straighten the legs out again. Okay, let's take one leg. I'm going to take my left, holding the foot in my hand, supporting the knee with my other hand. Let's start to make circles. Imagine you've got a spoon attached to your foot and you're stirring a big bowl of, a big bowl of food, a cauldron. This other leg, you can have it bent or you can have it straight, whatever feels right. And making those circles as big as we can. Coming back the other way. We can stick here with the stirring or maybe bringing the foot to the crook of your arm, wrapping the hands around and moving back and forth as if you're rocking a baby. So the idea is that when you're rocking a baby, you have a lot of care, you be gentle, and that's also how we should treat our own body as well. Let's go to the other side. So again, taking that other leg, first holding the foot, supporting the knee, making those circles, making those big circles in one direction and then in the other direction. If we can, or if we choose to, bringing the foot to the crook of the arm, wrapping the hands around and let's rock the baby. You may find that one side feels a bit stiffer than the other. Nice to get into these hips after after cycling. Just noticing the sensation. Okay, releasing down now, bringing the soles of the feet together. Maybe making a maybe a diamond type shape, so you're not bringing the heels too close at, to start with. Keeping the back tall and then kind of leaning forwards. This might be enough here or maybe just gently press the elbows down into the sides of the calf muscles. Just noticing any sensation there. Maybe bringing the heels a little bit closer in now. Holding onto the ankles and again just gently pressing the elbows into the inner knees. Aiming for a little bit of a stretch on the inside of the thighs. So when we've been doing a lot of cycling, we're new to cycling, we're tired while we're cycling, the tendency is to really grip um, onto your saddle. Um, obviously this makes these muscles really tired so it's really quite nice to let them stretch out. So still breathing, so easy just to hold your breath, but yeah, let's just keep that breath flowing in and out. Okay, releasing down. Well, let's bring these knees wide, these feet wide, and let one knee, and so we can lean back on your hands here, that's fine. Let one knee kind of roll inwards. Now, depending on your hips, this knee kind of may, may go straight down to the ground and it kind of does nothing for you. Bear with me, just take the, the opportunity to just breathe. You may find that the knee kind of comes in a little bit and it's quite intense. If it feels really, really intense, just use your hand to support the knee slightly. Breathe in to the area where it feels intense. And then breathe out. And when you breathe out, just almost allowing the muscles to, to let go a little bit. And if you find, if you're one of those that find that, oh, my knee's straight in, it doesn't, I don't feel anything, have an explore with where your foot starting point is. So, okay, does that feel anything? No, try it there. No, try it there. Ah, so just have a little explore of your, your body. Oh, and just really breathing in there. And let's go to the other side. So again, just starting from one position, allow that knee to roll in. 
we're keeping the seated bones on the ground still and just see how that feels again if you don't feel anything move that foot to a different place let, let the knee come in until you find kind of more sweet spot if you're really flexible and, and it doesn't do anything for you again just focus on the sensations you do feel using the breath have them at awareness and space that the breath brings and if it's intense we can just support the weight of the leg slightly with our hand this tells our brain that there's no danger that it's okay for the muscles to let go of a shake and we'll come up to a four point kneeling position so we've got hands below shoulders knees below hip and we'll go into a cat cow so starting with the tailbone the tailbone dips down the lower back arches and last of all the head drops down then as we breathe in that tailbone comes up the belly drops and the head lifts and just repeating on your own rhythm, always starting from the tailbone, finishing at the top of the head, almost like the spine's waving along. If you've done any classes of mine before, in person or virtually, you'll notice that pretty much every class has some cat cows. It's just wonderful. In fact, if you're a physio client, you probably get some cat cows if you've got some back issues <laughs> because it's magic it just works through those tight muscles in the back it allows us to mobilize the whole of the spine it's just really good for you i think it allows us to have more awareness so we've got pelvis where the pelvis is in space it just brings blood to that whole area so what i'd like us to do now is as we move through the spine just noticing if there's any kind of sticky bits or bits that feel Oh, a little bit as if the whole section of your spine moves in one go rather than like the flow of the spine it's a bit more uh, jarred and if you find that spot just gently move up and down in that position so say for at the bottom here if that was my area of stiffness i just start by just tilting back and forth just to really work into that part of the spine and you can choose to really kind of exaggerate those moves or maybe just do little pulses just use this as an opportunity to explore what feels good in your body and then let's move from cat cow to more of a like making circles with our hips we're making circles for the top part of the body maybe making a figure of eight so we're going into hips then into shoulders as if we're drawing a figure of eight and again, it's the great thing about being at home doing this class, you can kind of move how you, how you really want to move. And we'll let the pelvis just drop down, so stretching through the back a little bit. Looking back and stretching through the back. Oh, okay. So let's bring our knees together, our feet together, and sit back on our heels. Allow the belly to come down to the thighs and the head towards the mat, maybe resting on the rib, on the fists, stretching the hands away, or you could have the hands next to the body, wrists upwards. We're in our child's pose. And again, I don't think a class is complete without child's pose. It's a lovely resting posture. Um, and again, it helps to stretch out the whole of the back. So let's just breathe in to the back of the body. And breathe out. Let's um, stretch the fingers ahead, coming onto the fingertips, looking forwards. Then walk the fingers over to the right. Walk the fingers over to the left. And coming back to centre, putting the palms of the hands down. And we're going to imagine we're trying to keep our chin, nose and heart as close to the ground as we can. We go along, we're moving forwards. It'll be our bottoms are stuck up in the air, but we're sliding forwards, gliding along, 
until we come to the top of the mat where we lift up into a really, really, really loose cobra spinal pose. Now we're not pushing anything, we're just feeling the movement. And then we lift up our bottoms, lift up through the whole of the body to then circle down to sit back on our heels. So it's almost like we're making a kind of a circle with our body. So we slide, glide along the mat, lifting up, and then circling back down. Okay, so let's breathe. Ooh. Let's breathe in at the top. And then let's breathe out as we glide along. Breathing in to refuel. Out as we glide along. Breathing in. This is a slow version of a striking cobra. So we, we breathe in to fill up the energy and we breathe out to strike. Then coming back, let's rest in child's pose. You may want to try the version with the knees wide, big toes together, sitting onto the heels. Finding whichever child's pose suits you best in this moment. And then let's come. We're going to go into a plank position. Don't worry, we're not doing any hardcore core planking as such. This will be the most strenuous thing for the, the class, I think. Okay, so let's uh, bring our knees back slightly. Tuck our toes under. So we can kind of press for a bit of purchase through our toes, draw the navel towards the spine. And we're going to allow the body to move down towards the mat, but the arms stay straight. So imagining that you have got a pen or something between your shoulder blades, and you're trying to bring your shoulder blades together to meet that pen. So the shoulder blades glide together, then the shoulder blades glide apart. So just really getting some mobilisation in the, in the shoulder girdle. Moving up and down, it feels really weird to start with. But once it's kind of clicked, it, it makes a lot more sense. The gliding in, gliding out. Okay, okay. Right, let's just release our first circle of those wrists. Really nice to work into our wrists a little bit, especially if we've been on the bike a lot. Through, perhaps reverse prayer, wiggling the fingers, wiggling the thumbs. So coming to high kneeling, hands towards the hips, just pressing forwards with the groin, with the hips, bring the elbows towards each other, opening, expanding up through the, the front of the chest here. Coming back down, let's step forward to the right foot. So we're in kind of a box lunge type position. You may want to take it a little bit deeper. So if so, let's move that front foot forwards. So we're getting a bit more of a stretch through the front of the of the leg here. You can have that toe tucked under or that foot flat at the back. If you'd like a bit more padding, feel free to just fold up the mat. There we go. So we're set up here. We're growing tall through the spine. Let's breathe in so we raise up our hands towards the ceiling, interlacing the hands. And then growing tall, pressing the groin gently forwards. This is too much. Let's keep the hands on the hips. So pressing the groin forwards. Allowing gravity to do some work. Let's release the hands, interlace the hands behind the back. Stretch the knuckles away, squeeze the shoulder blades together. And then let's hinge forwards, still stretching the fingers away behind us. back up. Then let's swivel on our knee. So if you've had your foot backwards, let's just bring the foot to the other aspect of the mat. Bring the long leg outwards. So we move into our gate posture. So pressing forwards with our hips, toes pointing forwards, and then coming down onto our left hand forwards with the hips. So we've got a little straight line, fingers, knee, foot, 
opening through the chest here, hands on the hip. If we like, we can stretch that top hand over the head, just to add a little bit of stretch down that side body. It's fine if that hand would prefer to be flat, on the fingertips, on the wrist, doesn't matter, whatever feels great for you. Okay, so that toe pointing forward, you can come up onto the heel, lifting up the toes. It may feel slightly different, it may feel not much difference, but it's a chance to just explore how these little changes can really affect the rest of the body. Okay, let's come down. Let's circle around to the other side. So this time, if we're going to step forwards with that left leg, we're in that kind of box shape. If we like, we can come a bit further forwards. Can you adjust my mat? Okay, so we're getting that stretch coming down that right hip again, toes tucked under, flat, whichever feels better for you. Growing tall, allowing gravity to do, to do some work. Hands on hips, all hands off the head, interlacing, stretching up, growing tall. Um, interlacing the fingers behind the back, stretching the knuckles away, bringing the hands a little bit behind. And as we do this, folding forwards, keep stretching the arms behind. Coming back up. So let's swivel again on that back leg. Let's move around. We move into our uh, gate posture. Elbows pushing forwards, toes are forwards to start with. Fingertips come down, pressing forwards with the pelvis opening through the, the front of the, the chest, lifting up that top hand, stretching it overhead, seeing if we feel a bit of a stretch anywhere down that side body. You know, to explore bringing up that toe, bring the toes towards you, maybe point, just seeing how that foot position can affect any stretch sensation you are feeling. Coming, coming back down. Let's move up into a downward dog, just a little gentle downward dog. So, spreading our fingers, walking back with our feet, maybe having wide feet today, knees bent. Imagine we're growing long through our spine. We're lifting up through those seating bones and we can pedal through the, the feet. Maybe take a big breath in here. Let it out with a sigh. And again, big breath in. Out with a sigh. And then let's walk the hands towards the feet. And have those knees bent and let's just dangle for a moment. Let the head hang heavy. Those knees can be as bent as you like. You may want to actually just rest the belly on the legs. Maybe just we're allowing the head to relax here as we dangle down. And then let's start to roll up as if we're stacking one vertebra on top of the next. As we come gently up. Oh. Releasing up there. So in our standing mountain pose, Rounding down through our feet, growing tall, stretching our fingertips away. Okay, so let's put our hands on the sides of our thighs. Bring our feet close together, standing tall. Let's just gently side bend to one side, sliding the hand down. You may want to add the hand Above, to add a little bit of weight here, just be gentle, being aware of how it feels, the little fluctuations in, in where we have our chest is, so we want to turn that way or turn the other way, maybe just slightly affect how the stretch feels. And gently releasing, coming back up, sliding down on the other side. Exploring with those gentle twists. Okay, coming back. 
just releasing through the feet, letting the arms go from one side to another, letting the heels come up, really letting the arms be fluffy, kind of banging in to the body. Let's just get a bit of looseness happening. So let's move now into um, a balance. Let's do our, we'll do our tree in an adaptive tree. So you may want to find a wall or something to hold on to. Um, and we're going to start with grinding down through that left side. And I can't go this way so you can see. And bringing the sole of the right foot either to the inner, inner calf muscle or up high onto the thigh here. Um, probably avoid on the inner part of the knee. Coming up to the high part of the thigh, really pressing that thigh into the sole of your foot. The sole of the foot really presses into the thigh. So even if you've got kind of slidey lycra on, it should help to allow your foot to stay where it is. And we stand tall here and we bring our hands to heart centre. Okay, maybe find a drishti, a focal point to help you keep the balance. Stretch the arms above the head. Maybe stretching them high above or wide. We can make a cactus pose. Maybe just down here. Whatever feels right just now. Feeling that rootedness of that standing leg. And the spaciousness in the rest of the body. Let's challenge your balance further. Challenging this awareness of the body in space. Can you close your eyes? Notice how the body reacts to still <laughs> make you still again. <laughs> it's just incredible, really. So releasing down, give those legs a shape. Okay, we'll go to the adapter tree, which will sit to the same side. So standing on that left leg, let's, again, if you want to use support, let's catch that right foot in the right hand or the back of the trousers, it's absolutely fine as well. If, if you're finding it's difficult, maybe grabbing a jumper or a towel, wrapping it around the front of the shin and then you can kind of hold on to that there. And then we're aiming to move the heel towards the buttock, the heel back, the heel, the knee back. So it's coming level with the other knee, pressing the pelvis forwards. So keep squeezing that right buttock muscle to help move that knee back, pushing the hips forward, still growing tall. As much as we can, allow those knees to be next to each other as if they're kissing. And then bring that leg out to the side as wide as you like. Just have an explore again, which wideness gives you the maximum sensation or stretch. So again, let's just play with that. So we're all different. We've got so many different variables in, in our joints. Down. Okay, let's go to the other side. Let's go to our, our tree posture first. So that foot um, on the inner leg, either low or high. And again, our hand position is up to you. But again, finding that drishti, that focal point, sensing that rootedness through that standard leg, and allow that rootedness to be what gives you the freedom to stretch and be free. Like on a bike, we've got our rootedness onto our pedals and by having that, it allows us to be a lot looser elsewhere on the bike. We're just having that connection with, with the bike. Okay. If we'd like to test that balance again, feel free to close the eyes and notice um, how the, perhaps that ankle strategy uh, is a, works to, to help you keep your balance. And then we can put our foot down or we can move straight into that adaptive tree where we're catching the heel, catching the foot, bringing that, those knees so they're kissing as much as possible and pressing the hips forwards. Again, your hands, it doesn't matter too much where that is. And just noticing, squeezing that left buttock muscle to move that, that knee backwards. And then let's bring the knee out to the side slightly. Might come out quite wide, 
but we're still aiming to move that knee backwards, pushing the hips forwards, heel towards the buttock, and just trying a slightly different stretch. And yes, release down, give those legs a shake. Maybe draw the knee into the chest, either one. Circle that ankle, and the other side. Let's make our way down to the ground, lying on our fronts. The microphone, one moment. There we go. Okay, so coming on our fronts, let's come to our forearms. So we've got our forearms on the ground, about shoulder width, hands on the ground. And then let's just see if we can let our legs let go, our legs relax, our buttocks relax. So the idea here is to have the belly in contact with the ground, perhaps even the lowest ribs gently touching the ground. So this might mean widening the arms slightly, maybe moving them forwards. So you really get this sense of the belly being able to fully relax into the towards the ground. So if you do practice yoga regularly, um, sphinx pose or cobra, you activate your buttock muscles, you squeeze them and, and you activate the whole leg muscles to create a good foundation. In this variation we're allowing those muscles to just relax. It might even help if we really squeeze our buttock muscles to start with, so really squeeze and then let go. Maybe really help to let the heels roll out to the outside, maybe let the heels come inwards, just having a little roll in and out of those legs. Then come to stillness. We can even let the head relax down if that feels right, or you can keep the head up. So let's breathe in now, as we breathe in, breathing to the belly, letting the belly expand so we can see the legs on the ground. And just allowing the breath to be natural, coming in and out. Keep checking in with these buttocks and these leg muscles just to see that they're relaxing down. At any point, if you want to take a moment just to release out of the posture, please do so. Let's all come down now, resting the left cheek, either on the hands or on the ground. Just taking a moment here and stretch through the whole of the neck. And then let's bend up that right knee and catch it with your hand on that same side. If it doesn't reach, catching the trousers, or just bending that knee. So it, if you're, the lower leg is about perpendicular with the ground. And you may want to start to lift the, lift the chest up. You may be pressing through that left hand or arm, just to lift through the chest slightly. And holding on. And whichever variant you may want to see, if you can just lift up the knee off the ground slightly. Releasing down, not forcing anything too much, just exploring. You can have me a go if you can, kicking away that foot, helping to leverage up the lifting of that knee. And then coming back down, let's put our other cheek onto the ground this time, that right cheek. Taking a moment here just to let that neck stretch out. And then again, let's bend up that left leg this time. So either having that leg bent without any support, maybe reaching around, catching the trousers, catching the foot with the hand, maybe lifting the torso up slightly, just that top part of the chest up, with a bit of support from, from that other arm if you like. 
and we can explore here maybe having a go squeezing that left buttock muscle just to lift up the, the knee and the thigh maybe kick away with that foot into the hand to give some leverage to lift a little bit higher just having an explore if you want to deepen this at all we can we can reach around catching both sides whether that's onto the trousers or both feet or having both feet bent up as we lift up through the top of the torso squeezing the shoulder blades together kicking away with the feet as we lift up through the knees so it's both pose but it's kind of like a gentle nice version of both pose so we're just feeling that leverage of the kicking away of the feet into the arms lift up the torso we can feel the buttock muscles working we can feel the stretch from the front of the body and then releasing down bringing the forehead towards the ground perhaps resting on the hands and then let's move the hands and our arms to one side to the right side the forehead stays either face down or looking or, or the, the left cheek rests down and then we're bringing this right knee up towards that lowest elbow just taking a moment here this is a very exotic sounding flapping fish posture We're not trying to activate anything, it doesn't matter what it really looks like, we're just aiming to allow those muscles to, to chill out, use gravity. Let's put that leg back down, come back to centre and then over to the left, so we're keeping the, the arms in the same position, over to the left, we can put the right cheek on the ground or the forehead down on the ground drawing that left knee upwards towards that elbow and again just taking a moment allow the body to let go and again just breathing here and as we breathe if our mind wanders other thoughts come that's fine, just acknowledging that, but then choosing to come back to the body, back to the sensations in our, in our flapping fish posture. Let's bring it back to centre. Alright, okay, so let's move up onto a four point kneeling position again. And again, just going, rocking from one side and then to the other. Maybe doing a couple of rounds of cat cat belly down as the tailbone lifts, lifting up the head, coming back the other way. And if it feels nice to stay kind of in this arched position, this counterbalance, then maybe stay here for a moment, really lifting up, tucking under the pelvis, lifting up, dropping that head. Okay, so next we'll move to our melting heart posture soft variation of so thighs stay perpendicular throughout our aim really is to is for the heart to come down towards the ground hence the the melting heart so let's just walk our hands forwards maybe coming onto the forearms keeping keeping the buttocks stuck up in the in the air and this may be enough we're letting the heart melt towards the ground letting gravity do the work really that feels okay, that feels okay in your shoulders. Gently walking forwards with those arms, allowing the heart to come a little closer to the ground. It can be quite strong on the shoulders, so be really mindful of that and, and just really listen to your body. So we're coming, sliding down. Maybe the head comes to the ground. Maybe the arms stay bent, maybe they're straight. Just our aim really, have our bum stuck in the air and we're getting an arch in the spine here. Just breathing. And then coming back up to our four point kneeling. And then into a kneeling posture. So in the 
this kneeling posture we can circle the shoulders we can stretch the right arm to the sky pat ourselves on the back show you from behind <laughs> then reaching the left hand around fingers aiming to meet but fingers just holding on to the t-shirt aiming to get towards each other is absolutely great we're aiming for this elbow to kind of point upwards And down. Let's go to the other side, so stretching that left hand high, tapping ourselves on the back, reaching around, aiming for those fingertips to meet. They may meet, they may not. It may be different on one side than the other. Just stretching through. And releasing down. Circle those shoulders again. Okay, so we're going to move into our pigeon posture next. It's quite a deep stretch on, on the uh, piriformis muscle, one of the buttock muscles. Um, any knee issues, just hold fire a moment and I'll, I'll do a variation. So if you're joining me for the pigeon, let's go up into a, a downward dog. It can be a very loose downward dog. Okay, let's bend that left knee. Bring the left knee towards that left wrist. We're putting the shin at a longer diagonal on the ground, the outer edge of the foot is on the mat. Then work that back foot away, pressing through that heel, and then release the foot off. So in this posture, this may cause sensation, and you may want to just stay here. Um, equally, there may be discomfort, there may be pain. If there's any pain in the knee whatsoever, please come out and we'll do a variation. Okay, so at this point you've got the choice whether you stay here or whether you walk your hands forwards, resting on the forearms, resting on the hands, maybe the forehead comes to the ground. It's your choice really, just really listening to your body. I've often heard the phrase sweet discomfort associated with this posture and that, and that kind of deep stretch sensation is often what can happen if those muscles are quite tight and, and that's fine. Um, if that's there, we're aiming to breathe into that, that stretch. So as we breathe in, imagine that we've got a, a, a balloon where that deep sensation is. As we breathe in, that balloon expands. As we breathe out, we'll just let that balloon go. The air goes out of the balloon, the tension goes out of the balloon, and it goes on its way. We're using the breath here again. We've got breath, gravity, that are doing most of the work. Not really trying to force anything at all. One more breath. Let's, let's set up the other side and then we'll do the, the variation too. Let's walk those hands up, tuck those toes under, moving into downward dog. And then let's Bring that right knee forwards to the right wrist. Legs are to diagonal, outer edge of the foot is there. Pressing way through that back heel, then release that back foot. And again, we can choose to stay up here. We can work down, wherever feels comfortable for you. If the knees aren't too happy for variation, let's lie on our backs. So for that first side, let's bring the left um, ankle to the right thigh. Fingers behind the right thigh, drawing that right thigh in, head is rested. So we just gently pull that leg in towards us. And obviously to do the other side, we can stretch up the other side as well. So if you've been in your pigeon, Let's gently start to work our way out. So first, walking up with our hands. And if you're on the piriformis, the alternative stretch, you can swap sides now. Let's tuck those toes under as we work back into our down dog. Let's 
and then from our down dog. Let's come and make our way down to lying on our backs. If you've been in the other third form of stretch variation, we'll meet you there. Okay, so we're lying on our backs, our feet are on the ground now. Let's just do what's known as a sacred samba. So pressing the lower back into the mat. As you do, your tailbone will just lift up slightly and then we're rolling back again. So the bottom of the tailbone kind of comes towards the mat, the lower back lifts. So we're just rolling up and down, really just doing these pelvic tilts. And then starting to kind of go around in a circle. So we're going round on the pelvis, both directions. Really getting into the lower back, the pelvis area, poor neglected area, going <laughs> in cycling and massaging wherever feels nice. And then coming to stillness, let's move up into a bridge posture. So the same start, the lower back presses into the ground, the buttocks lift, and we lift all the way up until we have knees, hips, shoulders all in one line interlace the fingers underneath our bodies, walk our shoulders towards each other a little, lift our uh, sternum, our breastbone a little higher towards the chin, lifting up through the hips as much as we can, evenly squeezing with the buttocks. And then releasing the arms and let's lower down, imagine that we've got a press stud on each vertebrae, lowering down, pressing one into the mat at a time. And then let's gently press up again as if we're pressing those same press studs. Unpressing them, should I say. Up to the top and then lowering back down. This lovely back massage. And then let's bring the knees into the chest to give ourselves a little bit of a hug. Oh, maybe make some circles. down, bring the soles of the feet together, let the knees come out to the side. Let's take a moment here as we breathe in, imagine we're breathing into the very deepest part of the belly. If it feels too intense here, you can use your hands to gently support the thighs. wall is really useful or a chair if not that's fine too so if you don't have any equipment or wall let's bring our legs in hold the thighs and just kind of let the legs relax so we're just using the arms and the weight of the legs just to be we're not squeezing anything in but the knees are higher than the, than the chest if you've got a chair you can put the chair underneath your calf muscles resting the shins or the lower leg on the chair like this or if you've got a wall sliding yourself up to the wall so you're about a foot away and then lifting your legs up the wall so your legs are straight up towards the ceiling there shouldn't really be any tension in the backs of the the legs if there is tension just move the move the buttocks away a bit further um <clears throat> There we go, get yourself comfy. That's a great restorative recovery position, the legs up the wall posture. Brilliant um, in a pregnancy scenario as well, um, when, when there's kind of lots of water retention happening. And we're beginning the toes, just bringing the legs to the feet, circling the ankles. Awareness. You, know, you might be happy just to stay here. You may want to add one extra stretch through that inner thigh. So if you do, we we'll bring the soles of the feet together. Maybe coming slightly closer to the wall if you've moved yourself away from the wall. Letting the knees come down to the sides. The heels can come as close to the groin as feels right for you. Just have an explore. 
shoulder. And again, starting to bring awareness to the breath. Breathing in, allowing the belly to fill. Breathing out. One more big belly breath in and letting go. Relaxing, bringing the knees together, gently coming down from the wall, coming to lie on our backs again, bringing the feet towards the, the buttocks, bringing the arms to a T, letting the knees roll over to the right hand side, looking towards the left. back to centre and going over to the left if you like you can look to the right and coming back to centre draw the knees into the chest give ourselves a hug maybe bring the nose towards the knees squeeze then release and we'll move into shavasana our final resting posture Bring the feet wide, let them roll out to the side, head on the ground, palms facing up, maybe about 30 centimetres from the body, maybe more, maybe less, just see where is comfortable for you. If you want a pillow for your head, that's fine. If you want a blanket, that's great. Just be kind to yourself. Okay, so for our Shavasana, you can have your eyes open or closed ever feels comfortable for you. And so as we did at the beginning, becoming aware of the breath. Noticing as the air enters your nostrils and goes on its journey to the lungs. Noticing the rise and the fall of the chest. aware of the right sole of your foot. Just the right sole. And then imagining as we breathe in that the air is entering through that right sole. The air, that new energy, is travelling up from the sole, up through your legs, your knees, thigh, buttocks, all the way up to the right side of your torso, right arm, right shoulder, right neck, all the way to the right side of the head. As we breathe out, we breathe out down the left side of the head, the left side of the body, the arm, the left side of the pelvis, the left leg, until we eventually breathe out through the sole of the left foot. We breathe in, through the left sole of the foot, all the way up to the left side of the body until we breathe out all the way through the right side of the body from the top to the sole of that right foot. Breathing in through that right sole to the top of the head. Breathing out down the left side from the head to the sole of the foot. Continuing in your own breath, breathing in one side, breathing out through the other, knowing that everywhere that fresh breath goes, invigorates, collects tension, and all that tension becomes released through the sole of the foot, and it goes on its way. And again, bringing awareness to the felt sensation of breathing. And then increasing that breath, so breathing deeply in, filling up the whole of the body. And let it out with a sigh through the mouth. <sighs> One last time, fully breathing in. Let it go. <sighs> Wiggling fingers, wiggling toes. Stretching the arms above the head, 
and then bend up the knees and rolling over to the right hand side, supporting the head where necessary. Just taking a moment here to check in with the body, with the mind. And then gently making your way back up to a seated position. Keeping the eyes closed if that feels comfortable. Or bringing the palms of the hands together and rubbing the palms, creating fire, great heat in the hands. And when the palms become warm, covering the eyes, letting that warmth seep into the face muscles, to the jaw, the neck, the head, and the shoulders, softening as it goes. And gently opening the eyes, letting the light in as we move the hands down to heart centre. I'd like to thank you for joining me in practice today. Namaste. So have an excellent uh, rest of your festival. And if you've got any questions, um, comments, please feel free to comment on the platform from which you're, you're watching this and I'll do my best to, to get back to you. Okay, thank you. <laughs>